Born in 1752, Philip Freneau was a writer during the time of the Revolutionary War. He was most definitely on the patriotic side and criticized the British heavily. At one point in his life, he was kidnapped by the British and treated cruelly. Then, when he was released, he fought for America's independence from Britain. Later on in his career, he worked with Thomas Jefferson to support anti-federalism. He was an anti-federalist, an abolitionist, and was very critical of Christianity and churches. One of the few prominent writers in his time who wasn't for Christianity. He was raised in Manhattan and had social status along with wealth. He was able to meet many other established writers and artists easily. He had access to the best education. He was enrolled in Princeton University when he was 15 years old. There, he met James Madison and Hugh Henry Breckenridge. For no one, Breckenridge were close and both had an interest in writing. They both wrote a speech together, which Breckenridge delivered. After graduating, Freneau worked as a teacher while trying to get his writer career, writing career going. In 1776, he sailed to St. Croix for a job as a secretary on a plantation for two to three years. Freneau wrote his poem to Sir Toby while he was working on the plantation. The setting he was in was pretty with plants and landscaping, but he saw many acts of cruelty that ruined it. Poverty was rampant, and the wealthy were profiting on slave labor. The poor were struggling to get by, and the social class kept, kept growing. Slaves were, of course, being treated horribly, and their conditions for survival were barely met. They were overworked and very much undercompensated. They did not have many chances to live a, a different life, since it was so easy for them to be caught escaping. There would be people of their own kind there to betray refugees. There were a few rebellions, but slavery did not fully end until later in the 19th century. St. Croix was not technically a part of the United States for a while, so slavery continued on even after it had been abolished in the States. Pernod wrote this poem on what he saw as slavery before the Revolutionary War. So, at this point in time, not enough people were concerned about stopping slavery to make much of a difference. The first two lines of the poem to Sir Toby state that the closest thing to hell on this earth would be on the slave plantations, specifically Sir Toby's slave plan plantation. Then, he states the terrors that the slaves had to go through, how they were beat, the harsh conditions they were through, how hard it would be to rebel, and stuff. Like that. The following stanza questions how this system was put into place in the first place. The slaves are forced to see their masters living a much more comfortable life, while they then live in horrid conditions and would be attacked if they ever tried to change their lives for the better. He continues to discuss how we saw pregnant women working in the fields without receiving any mercy. They were forced to work in any conditions, and they would not receive enough food, drink, or rest. He told how there were some traitors people that would take refugees back into slavery for monetary rewards. He then asked if the wealth Sir Toby collected was worth all of their pain. From his description of the harsh nature that these people lived in, it can be seen that Bruno very strongly disapproved of the idea of slavery. Morally, he was disgusted by the way these people were being treated. As a northerner, it was probably natural for him to feel that way since the north was much less dependent on slave labor than the areas that were closer to the equator. His narrative, his narrative of what he saw would give other people the, the realizations of the horrible things that were going on. It can be inferred that most people did not fully understand how bad slavery was, so a stay on St. Croix might have been a shock for him. Most northerners who already did not like slavery did not even fully understand all the things that were happening on plantations and such. Pernod's poem must have shined more awareness on the horrors of slavery to more people in America, which would then make them more likely to act. People today also benefit from his narrative of slavery on St. Croix because not many people of the 21st century fully understand how bad slavery was 
and how hard it was to stay alive as a slave in those times. For no slavery narrative timelessly helps many people better see the depths of horrors of slavery.